<clears throat> the following program contains mature subject matter, coarse language, and scenes that some viewers may find offensive. Viewer discretion is advised. The reserve is a piece of land that was given to us by the government, just for native people. There was this thing that I was told by my father. It was called the 500-year war. It was since the settlers came in in the 1400s. They would come and just tell us that you live in this part of this land now, and we own the rest of this. And that's when the war started between the settlers and the native people. And we're still in it. Canada, a country best known internationally for vast unpopulated landscapes, overly polite citizens, and the rapper Drake. Less known is the contentious relationship between the indigenous First Nations and the colonial forces of the Canadian government. Beginning with the Indian Act of 1876, First Nations were forced off of their traditional territories and onto the reserve system. These are small and often isolated parcels of land still owned by the government. Decades later and the system is still in place, with nearly half of Canada's First Nations population living on reserves. Conditions on reserves remain so difficult that a UN Indigenous Rights investigator officially described a state of crisis due to, among many factors, a lack of infrastructure, including drinking water and access to education and health care. You might be wondering what any of this has to do with pro wrestling. A few years ago, I saw footage of the Canadian Wrestling Federation's Ice Road Wrestling Tour. CWF is an independent promotion headed by Frank Rickman, known by the ring name Chris Thorne. The company has carved out a niche in the business by visiting the most remote indigenous communities in northern Quebec. For reservations that are isolated from outside entertainment, the CWF is literally the only show in town. I'm joining their summer tour to see firsthand why this band of road warriors are continuously welcomed by the communities they visit and learn more about the connection between wrestling and the Cree and Inuit communities of the James Bay region. We travel on the road, sometimes for 30 hours straight, show up at a show, there is no time to sleep. We're setting a ring up, doing the show, tearing down, and we're leaving for the next community. We are the biggest traveling company in Canada. Nobody does more shows than us. Last year we did 97 shows. I'm gonna beat it this year. People sometimes look at you, oh, he's loaded, he's making a fortune off this. And you're not, you really aren't. I make a living, I'm far from being rich. <laughs> I think a real businessman would say, screw this, call it quits. 
But me, it's like this is part of me and, and I'm gonna continue to do what I do regardless. Maybe it's not the smartest business decisions in the world, but you know, this is what I do. First stop was Skaganish. Well, Skaganish is a Cree community of over 2,200 people on the southeast shore of James Bay in the Yushti Territory in northern Quebec, Canada. The community has only had road access since 2001 and is over 14 hours by truck from Montreal. The CWF crew doesn't waste any time. Moments after arriving in town, Frank has them loading into the hockey rink to set up the ring. Everybody that comes out, like I, I watch them, I look at them, and I judge them. They have to go by my rules. Everybody helps put up the ring. Look at this guy. Oh, oh. Only on camera. You know, no drugs, no alcohol, no hooking up with any of the girls in the community. I've had guys come on a tour, they've lasted three days and flew themselves home. Was it like custom built for you guys? Because yeah, that's, this was custom built like 20 something years ago. Okay. The first day is always the hardest. It gets boring just setting up the thing over and over. <laughs> Shadow Extreme is a Cree wrestler from the First Nation community of Puckettawagan. He spent years training mainly in Winnipeg when Frank and the CWF crew rolled through his community. After an audition and a debut match, Frank quickly signed him and gave him a seat in the van. He's a crowd favorite in these communities. Tony Caribou is an amateur stuntman, a break dancer, and a parkour practitioner now turned wrestler. Also from Puckettawagan, he was first introduced to the sport and the CWF by his uncle Shadow, and the pair now form the tag team, Cree Extreme. Their inclusion is critical as Cree Extreme are not only baby faces, wrestling speak for heroes, but also the only First Nations wrestlers taking part in the tour. For their young audiences, it's a much needed opportunity to see legit First Nations representation in the ring. CWF's top baby face is Jesse Bieber. He literally grew up on the road, cutting his teeth as a referee before becoming a wrestler and CWF's current champion. While he's Frank's son, no amount of nepotism can account for his popularity with these crowds. So you've been a wrestling fan pretty much your whole life, right? Yeah, like uh, I was born in 84, WrestleMania started in 84. Yep. You know, like it's uh, uh, something that was like, that I just loved. Tim Toolman Hill is one third of the award winning and unapologetically political group A Tribe Called Red. He's also a close friend and fellow lifelong wrestling fanatic. When I told him I was traveling to Wiscaganish to witness Cree Extreme wrestle, he jumped in a truck and drove 22 hours to hang out with us. Tim grew up in Canada's reserve system in Six Nations of the Grand River and knows firsthand the effects it can have on the confidence of First Nations youth. Growing up on the res, you get a sense of like, your education isn't that great, you know? Uh, that's, what they, that's what they say. And like, uh, it usually comes even from our own people. A lot of people like kind of like hold us down and we get the sense that, you know, that not only that we can't succeed out there, but we can't, uh, we don't belong out there. I grew up not really having much representation in media, being, you know, indigenous in this world. Like, for wrestling though, it was always the ultimate warrior for me. Love the warrior. I, 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 stri I knew he wasn't, yeah. like, native, yeah. indigenous or anything, but the fact that he was a warrior and what he stood for, it just, like, connected with me. Like, it's all, like, native people who have, like, this connection with wrestling. It's something that's universal. We went with the boys to cut promos at the local radio station. Native-run radio stations serve an important role on reservations by providing a powerful local voice. And for CWF, it's one of the most reliable ways to get the word out about this show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is a show not to miss. You come out, you see wrestling's greatest pop star, Jesse Bieber. I am your CWF heavyweight champion. No clue who I'm wrestling yet, but I can tell you it's going to be one hell of a show, and I'm going to make sure you have one hell of a time. I'm Chad Extreme. All the way from Northern Manitoba. Also with me is uh, my tag team partner and relative, Tony Caribou. Yay. <laughs> Hello, Skaganish. I am the high-flying, spectacular First Nation sensation, Tony. 
I will be wrestling tonight. In yeah. action. In action. <laughs> I will be in action. Hoya! And I want to thank you. What is your name, by the way? Greta. Greta. Are you going to be there? I don't know. She doesn't know. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, come down at 7 p.m. to the sports complex. $2 for kids, $5 for adults, and I guarantee you, you're going to have a great time. Hey! What is it about wrestling that, that we connected with so much? I don't understand. Grappling was a thing with our people back then. Mm -hmm. There's always been a practice of just grappling and pinning each other down to the ground. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, there's lake wrestling up north. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's even the uh, the hook. The hook. The I hook. was going to say the hook. Yeah. Where they wrap each other's arms like around and they grab each they other's grip. chicken and, and then pull. pull. And whoever taps first is like, you lost. And that's a wrestling move. That's been, like, brought into wrestling, too, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, the yeah, hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're really big on the competition and pain. I guess how much you can endure. Long before the CWF began touring, wrestling was visiting First Nation communities in Canada. Starting in the 1980s, Tony Candela, a promoter based out of Winnipeg, started running tours on reservations across the north. Now the wrestlers of CWF continue that tradition by making sure wrestling remains active and present on reserves for a new generation of First Nations youth. So Tony's been doing this for five years? Yeah, but like only seriously for the past like two. Uh, you see he's got like a natural aptitude for it, like Yeah he does. Ah, oh, he sells good too. Pardon me? He sells good too. Yeah. This rumble is for the title. So we got Tim Toolman from Tribe Called Red. He's going to be special guest referee. Now, Tim, the only major rules to this, both their little feet touch the ground. They're out. They're out. It's super hectic right now. We got four guys in the ring. Shadow is my actual birth name. It was given to me because of my dad had a rock band called The Shadows. When I was a child, when I did the crazy stuff, I was always uh, doing something to uh, surprise or give a little bit of a shock factor to people. I used to just jump off a tree onto like a bunch of bushes and just get scrapes and cuts and get hurt. That all led to being very fearless. I'm not like a psycho or a mentally challenged or anything. I just don't like being bored. There's not much to do in the res. <laughs> I wanted to become a wrestler. I was obsessed about wrestling. I even had dreams about being inside a wrestling ring. And I knew there was a wrestling school somewhere and uh, I found it, it was quite a distance. So I had to take a eight hour train ride and I jump on a Greyhound bus to Winnipeg because another 10 hours. The next day I have to take the train back to Putt. And I did that once a month for a whole year and a half.
every kid that I talked to talked about how amazing it was to see you in there. You know? Thank you. I wanted to inspire. You know, I'm native, and I'm wrestling among my other native people, so I want to inspire my people. The thing was, like, you know, the government just, here, here's some land. Okay, do whatever you want to do. Just don't bother us. Basically, so we're just in our own little cooped up area, area and we just, I don't know, live life to, with our own. And, you know, things happen, good and bad. And, well, since the, like, I was saying, like, we're an angry, like, angry people now because of what happened to us. <laughs> so, a lot of people like to go towards alcoholism. It's very depressing. See come here, see come here, Bing. Can I borrow a quarter? You borrow a quarter? Yeah, I'll give you. You're not gonna pay it back. Yeah, I will. I'm not. I always pay back. When? When I land. <laughs> I guess I consider him like family. So he comes, stays at our house, and trains at our school. He's just, uh, he's just a great person, you know, to have around. And um, I, I guess we kind of took him under our wing. And Tony's now here, and it's Shadow's nephew. They're a tag team, and I think uh, they could go places. Wamagustui and Kajurapek are the northernmost Cree and the southernmost Inuit village in Quebec. The community is only accessible by air and for a few weeks in the late summer by boat. Me and Tony were both from Puck to Wagon, and I trained a lot of the kids and the teens that were interested in wrestling. When I purchased my wrestling ring, Tony was the first person to come over and help set up the wrestling ring. Something in his life happened. He was going down a dark path for a while. So when CWF came to Puck and scooped him up, that was it. He just needed to get out of there before it got any worse. Okay. So now you know what you gotta do? I gotta tuck, go faster. Okay. If you're long to do it, I can't remember what's gonna be able to do it. Shadow's trying to get his flips back right now. He's had to let a lot of that flip that he used to be able to do go. So Tony's taking him through and helping him get his flip back. He's learning, you know, I'm helping him break it down. I could do this too, but I don't want to show off for everyone. Oh! Oh, oh, just about. Better though. Get the second. Oh. <laughs> that was awesome though. You were so high. It seems like parkour and wrestling are such a natural mix together. You know, they yeah. just go so well. Like, what do you feel wrestling has given you? Gave me confidence. I gave up hope for a bit because I didn't have nothing to do at Puck. Like, I, I'm trying to give them something to do and something fun. Well, you're saving them from making an 18-hour journey like you had to do. Oh, to to wrestling school. yes. That's the, one of the goals I wanted to do when I became a wrestler. You're straight edge, you know. From, yeah, straight edge, yes. Was it hard growing up uh, avoiding, not, if, not even necessarily, you know, alcohol and drugs and things like that, but even just the conflict that brings from people around you using drugs and alcohol? I just somehow just stayed away from it. I don't know how I stayed away from it. I just stayed away. You are strong. I don't know. I just, yeah. I don't know. For some people that drink, it's normal. It's just normal for me to, like, not drink and not smoke or do drugs. And can you grab my jacket? I'm getting cold now. <laughs> I was gonna say, you must be <laughs> freezing. Do you want my jacket? Do you want me to just my, warm I got you my own jacket. <laughs> you gotta, gotta keep them warm. No, oh, yeah. I, I could feel my nipples getting hard, so. As well as wrestling shows, Frank and the CWF crew also offer training camps for local kids. 
Kayla is one of their most devoted students. She'll wait months between lessons as the guys only come through her town three or four times a year. You gonna do some uh, some stuff? Lock up with Jesse. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Ah. Good girl. So this one? There you yep, go. There you go. This is strong too. I like it. Loosen up a little. She'll be able to move around a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Ready? I was uh, really interested about doing the things that they were doing. Yep. So I decided to see how it feels like to be an actual wrestler. Remember how to reverse it? No. Okay, so no? Here. Uh, I have like a, a long-term and a short-term memory loss. I got that from my father, biological father. Watch, stop breaking. Okay, I'm gonna hook his hand. Step through, up here. I'm gonna hook, step, place, okay? I always wanted to get the community involved in what we're doing. Okay. Like every right. community we go to now, there's a community member that's training with us. So I want to make that person's dream come true. You're gonna fall down on your face, Kayla. Just fall on your face, drop the hold. Okay. Just put your hands up, hands up, hands up. Hold down. Girl. Kayla's one of the girls from um, a community, it's a flying community, troubled background. Come on, push up, shot her head. And she's an amazing kid. Good girl. Nice. We run different programs, and she's been involved with all of them. She really, really took to the wrestling, which I was shocked, because a lot of girls don't really take to it. You want to try and stop the pain, right? So the way to do that is to try and come this way, right? I got adopted at eight months. My parents couldn't uh, be able to take care of me. Oh! 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 Whoa. Ah. They're still alcoholics, drug addicts. They told me I, I won't be able to live with them until I'm 18 again. So it's kind of hard uh, seeing them drinking or doing drugs. I don't mainly go out anymore. After my uh, grandpa passed, I started not going out after that. My grandfather um, was like a father to me. Like here, if I wanted to, I could break off and flip you. Oh. Yeah. The training camp was amazing. I had an opportunity to be able to go back outside and see the world again and um, to be able to be connected to new people. Oh! You're doing awesome. I felt like uh, I was myself in that ring. Like I can do anything. Letting out all the stress inside me. And the depression. I feel blessed in that uh, ring. So tell me about your first match. I actually won the um, Royal Rumble last year. Yeah? Yes. That's awesome. A lot of kids wanted my signature for some reason. How does that make you feel? Like you're like a, a wrestling star? Well, first of all, it's amazing that kids can like look up to me after doing good things in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be able to see how it feels to be like um, a kid that is that is very known well in this community. And also you're you're a really positive role model too because yes. of your stance on drugs and alcohol. Yes. So you're set. You're like the next John Cena. Yes. <laughs> Shadow, I think he's a role model. He avoided all the things that are affecting kids this generation. The kids love Shadow. Hearing Kayla's story has made it clear how indigenous wrestlers like Shadow show kids that there's a place for them in the world outside of the reserve. As Tim pointed out in the beginning of the tour, it's not just the geographically remote nature of the reserves, 
but the psychological isolation that can make kids feel trapped. Wow. The reality is that Aboriginal youth in Canada face many challenges that stem from hundreds of years of colonialism. The weight of all of this can be overwhelming and manifests itself in truly abhorrent statistics. First Nations youth are over five times more likely to take their own lives compared to the Canadian average. From my perspective, the simple action of pre extreme visiting communities and kids like Kayla has the power to be revolutionary. I think everyone should do it before we leave. Oh, God. She's just crazy. Take off the pants, too. Just do it quick, Jess. Yeah, because you want Actually, to Actually, the pants want might be better because you put warm back on. These be no. Definitely the socks. There's no point in wearing your socks in. <laughs> right now, we are in some intense negotiations to see whether or not Jesse and Rex will go jump in the freezing cold water behind me. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> you bailed on me! Oh, go on, guys! Go back in. No, f that! Oh, Tony's just going in. No. Oh, Tony just walked in. Tony! Fuck oh. the wagons over there! Oh, stop. <laughs> So, you don't do this in Japan? No. <laughs> no? Don't. No. Marafuji and you don't go running into the cold water? <laughs> Kaito Kiyomiya wrestles with Noah, a very respected promotion back in Japan. At this stage in his career, he's referred to as, in the Japanese system, a young boy, basically a rookie. Of late, he's been training under the famous Naomichi Marafuji, and he's well on his way to having a great career. But it's standard practice for promotions to send their young boys abroad, gaining experience wrestling different styles and working in front of foreign audiences. The Northern Tour with CWF is Kaito's first experience of Canada, and you have to note that this experience couldn't be further from Tokyo. Okay. One more time. あの、日本の自分の会社の方に海外修行したいっていうことを直訴したら海外はすごい重要なことだと思ってます。グッド。うん、クリスさんはあのすごい優しく接してくれるので。エムロック。ナイス。おや。そうそう、here。So <笑> すごい無駄な動きがあったら、あの、いけないので。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。
The history and present day situation these communities face is little known within other parts of Canada, much less in Japan, so I can't imagine what he must think of the whole tour. あの、多いので、ほとんどがもう子供のファンなので、カナダの方がリアクションがすごいありますね。しかもやっぱりあの、子供は素直なので、もうすごい声で応援してくれるんですよ。悪いことをやったらもうブーだし、いいことをやったら
So I do a lot of comedy uh, and I do a lot of uh, interacting with them. As long as they're invested in my match, I'm happy. Tell that the CWF has been doing this for years because this card is perfectly suited for this room. <laughs> We're winning them over with every spot. I always wanted my kids to follow in my footsteps and become a wrestler. I don't think I really thought of that when I first started my wrestling. I should have expected it because I would go home and I'd wrestle with my kids all the time. Father versus son. I don't think I've ever seen a father versus son wrestling match. It's quite terrifying from this angle. So intense! Yeah, this is, I think, the most intense match between them. Hey. Oh, God! Oh. There's something especially vicious about watching a dad suplex his own son. We don't walk around saying, Jesse's my son. Matter of fact, a lot of people don't know that. Jesse is extremely talented. And I don't want people looking down at him because he's the promoter's kid. Don't do it! Oh! Oh my god! Oh, looks like Jesse got busted open in the mouth. Did you follow? Yeah, let's follow. watching a wrestling show in Japan in the 80s with everyone running around like this. It's awesome. Gross. Oh yeah, my tooth was inside my lip. <laughs> I had to like pull my lip out and up. <laughs> everyone thinks that you don't get injured and, and we don't put everything out there, but I mean, that just goes to show you. All right. Yeah. No. Sorry. No, don't worry about it. Bye. Happens. Sometimes Bye. things happen. Okay, I'm gonna cut it out. Right. Can I take it's back? Can I get it again? Got some glue? Just cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs>
true Canadian. Sometimes pushing the envelope is good. Ladies and gentlemen, let's walk into the ring. Here you got Mr. Aboriginal himself. Here he is fighting for us. Everybody in that audience wanted to be Shadow. That's the O, there's the N, there's the Y. I've witnessed wrestling matches around the world, but I don't think I've ever met wrestlers with more of a direct impact on their fans than CWF, especially Tony and Shadow. Their audiences are young, impressionable, and starved for outside perspectives. It's telling of the disconnect between Canada and the nations I've visited that this band of road warriors are literally the only live entertainment that makes it to these communities. I don't think the wrestlers plan on it, nor are they even fully aware of it, but they command great responsibility. Matthew the Mountie versus Cree Extreme was more than just a wrestling match. It represents an ongoing dialogue around who or what is Canadian, and importantly, what does a Canadian hero look like by default? The fact that this is happening on Canada's 150th birthday couldn't come at a more opportune time. I feel really low. few places on the planet where you can't tune into some form of professional wrestling on a television or the internet. But to experience it in the flesh is a different story. For the remote First Nation communities of Northern Canada, it'd be all but impossible if it weren't for the metal of the wrestlers of the CWF. But the relationship is reciprocal to say the least. The history of fandom within these communities is deep and rooted in something more than just pure spectacle. I can't help but think that, tucked far away from the glitz and glamour of the main stage, resides the beating heart of professional wrestling. The audiences of these small communities, and the wrestlers willing to weather the roads to find them.